Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to six ways British and American hotels are very different. Now, this is actually quite an interesting video. I remember the first time me and my family went to uh, uh, to Florida, to the Disney World and uh, Universal stuff. We stayed at a, uh, I think it was a comfort suite in Kissimmee, I think. And um, there, there's six of us, right? So there's me, my two younger sisters and my younger brother and then my parents. And we stayed in just two rooms between all six of us. But I remember the beds were absolutely massive. Like each room had uh, two king size beds in there. But, and each bed was huge. I, it was bigger than a, I think it was, they were bigger than kings. I think they were probably super kings. And it, I just, I remember my mind being blown at how big these beds were genuinely. And uh, it made me think, are all American hotels like that? Like. The following time, because um, we've been, to, we went to Florida twice. We stayed at an Airbnb, so it wasn't really a hotel. Not really a fair comparison. Like, so I've always thought our hotel rooms in the states just typically bigger, and it. I think they probably are right because space. You know, space here in the UK is just ridiculously hard to find. We're so built up. We're quite. We're a really small country, so space is hard to find. So by default, our properties are smaller than yours. So it's probably the same thing for hotels too. Your hotels are probably just way bigger because you, you know, you've got way more space in abundance, right? So this video is by Lost in the Pond Lawrence. He's like probably my favorite channel on YouTube. Does a great job at these types of uh, UK versus US videos. So yeah, this should be really interesting, especially. I'm planning this month-long trip to the States in uh, in early 2023. Let's do it. This is the word we use for what Americans might call a bellboy or a bellhop. Bellboy. Hello. What do we call a bellboy? We just concierge, I guess. That's how we'd refer to him. I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost, lost in, in the, the pond. pond. And one of those memos pertains to hotels, or as they're known in Britain, hotels I mean it's the same and of course as a what's the difference between a hotel and a motel by the way like is there a, is, there, is there an actual difference certified YouTube sensation I've done my fair bit of world travel right just off the top of my head I've been to Britain America you know and I think from that <laughs> I've stayed in quite a few hotels so I know what I'm talking about but when it comes to the two countries whether you're just looking for a quick getaway or something discreet it is worth learning that hotels in Britain aren't necessarily the same as their American counterparts. And so without further ado, let's metaphorically ding one of those bells at reception as I uncover ways that British and American hotels are very different. All you right. know, when I was out there for the first time on the American open road, living the hotel lifestyle on my honeymoon, the first confusing thing that I noticed is that elevators in American hotels, and as it turns out, everywhere else, insist upon taking you to different floors to what they would in Britain. Lawrence, what do you mean by that? Yeah, what well, do you here's mean? how elevators slash lifts, we'll get onto terminology later, work in Britain. The floor where I enter the hotel and speak it's to reception floor. and ask them if they have any free dental floss is known in Britain as the ground floor. When yeah. you enter the elevator, you press G to stay on the ground floor. Nobody would ever do that. Hold on, is this not how things are done in the States? Or number one, to go up to the floor above. Or number two, above that. Three, above and that. So and you get my drift. <laughs> but in America, I don't know why my hand is still up there. In America, it's a little bit different. Because that same floor where I enter the hotel and talk to reception and ask them for some free dental floss and they actually know what dental floss is, is the first floor. And this is usually denoted what? in the elevator by the number one. So the floor immediately above that is two. And then three. And then four. And then five. And then I'm a little bit hazy. I guess I can see why you would do that, but you're on the ground. Like, you aren't elevated in any way. Like, you are literally at ground level. So doesn't it, it I think it makes more sense to call it the ground floor, but I guess, yeah, I guess if you grew up calling it the first floor, because when you're at home in your house, if you live in a two-story or three-story house, the, 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 the floor that's lowest to the ground, do you call that the first floor as well? after that and then you get to your room and this is where those pan-atlantic differences really take shape 
or should I say size, because there's one key rule. On the whole, British hotel rooms tend to be smaller than their American counterparts. 100%. And the reason for this, as we all know, is that America marginally outfreedoms Britain. But it's also because Britain <laughs> is about a 40th the size of the United States. Exactly, that's so the true reason. so we just sort reason. of cram things in. In fact, awkwardly, a tiny British hotel room was where I first met my in-laws. And they were staying in a room about the size of this studio, which surprisingly, given that I am often dubbed America's finest British import, is not that big. And at the best of time, I don't like being in close proximity to humans. So being squashed in a room with my future in-laws was the second most horrifying experience of my life. And I know what you think. God, I hope they're not watching this video. Thinking, Ooh, Lawrence, what was the first? Being squashed in the elevator with them on the way up. But the next time we met in an American hotel, we sure did have a chuckle. At least I think we did. I couldn't hear them because they were on the other side of the room. You see, American hotel rooms like cars or portion sizes or America itself are just bigger. I mean, they'd have to be, right? Especially given what we've discovered on this channel about the differences in bed sizes. And of course, a bed is not the only place in a hotel room where you lie down. In addition to the bed, the sofa, and in desperate times, the closet, which should prompt nobody to ask me about the coat hanger incident of 1998, there is also the bathtub. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, Lawrence, the British bathtub has separate taps for hot and cold. Well, firstly, that's not always true. And secondly, that's not where I was going with this. I was actually gonna mention the floor height, because while in America, the bathroom floor and the bottom of the bathtub are more or less level with each other, this is often not the case what? in Britain. To go from the floor to the bathtub, you often have to kind of step up because the bottom of the bathtub is higher up than the floor. There's one thing to remember that's getting in. Hold on, so American bathtubs are like, almost like, so let's say that's the floor. An American bathtub will be like, sort of dug in within to the floor. Wow, that's interesting. But getting out when your feet are wet and soapy, it could lead to an unintentionally hilarious TikTok video. In fact, <laughs> I do have footage, but I can't show it on here because I'd get hundreds of complaints and an equal number of marriage proposals. So just take my word for it. Very Electric plugs are, of course, found in many places and through much of our daily lives. But never more do I need them than when I'm in a hotel. So because of this, it is worth remembering some of the key differences between British and American plug sockets. But don't take my word for it. Instead, listen to me from last year. It was once said by me in just a second from now that you can tell a lot about a country by the size of its plugs. And given its unparalleled record of boasting larger stuff than everyone else, America might fancy its chances of winning the my plugs bigger than your plug debate. But the truth is, and you might find this shocking, <laughs> British plugs are larger. Yeah. You can't talk about AC plugs without talking about prongs. Prongs are the protruding sticks of metal that keep the plug adjoined to the wall like a docked plane. Why is it that, you know, different countries use different plugs? I mean, wouldn't it just make sense if every country had the same, you know, plug system? Because then when you travel in between them, you don't have to buy adapters and stuff. But then again, I imagine maybe it's all the money that companies make from selling adapters. Or is it something to do with the power distribution, like the power grids in certain countries? Because it just it's so annoying. Like you go to a country and you forget your adapter. You've got to go then find an adapter. It's like, ah, oh, I just want to plug in my laptop. <laughs> And the only reason I made an aviation simile there was to draw your attention to the miniature control tower I made from British and American adapters while I was bored. Anyway, there are several key differences in this department. On British plugs, the prongs are ever so slightly longer and crucially thicker. This makes them sturdier and impossible to bend. How do I know that? Because I was 14 once. But whereas British plugs, that is, Type G plugs, are decidedly triple pronged, that's not always the case in America. Sure, Type B plugs, the ones whose sockets look like surprised ghosts, definitely do have three prongs. But Type A plugs, which are easily the more outgoing and competitive of the two, are bi-pronged. Due to the manner in which each country feeds the wires into the plug, there's also a difference in how they hang from the wall socket. In Britain, the wire hangs vertically from the plug, thus making it harder to yank from the wall by pulling the cable. And the horizontal connection of American... Yeah, this this just... It, it's not as... Uh, it doesn't seem as durable. And especially because the, uh, the, the prongs are quite thin, I can imagine that they get bent 
out of shape quite uh, quite easy. Plugs means that you can do this in theory, but it's not recommended. One of the biggest concerns for Americans visiting Britain, aside from being forced to eat mushy peas, is the Great British American voltage divide. In Britain, residential voltage is categorized as 230 volts, while it's generally 120 in the US. Moreover, British mains electricity operates on a 50 hertz frequency and America on 60. What does all of this mean? Well, let's just say that you want to use your American laptop top in Britain, but it doesn't run on 230 volts, is not dual voltage, or is incompatible with 50 hertz. In that instance, you'll need to run to Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. A power converter. <laughs> power converters. When he slips into the American accent, he does it really well. I guess he's lived out there for so long, he's got it down to a T. It will convert the voltage from 230 to the voltage of your laptop. In the event that your power converter doesn't come with a Type G plug adapter, be sure to also pick up one of these. This plug adapter is magic. It allows you to turn your Type A or B American plug into a Type G British plug. For Brits visiting America, the same applies, but in reverse. A step-down power converter or transformer might also be needed to safely use devices in the US. Both are widely available for Americans and Brits on Amazon. I'd say the most obvious difference between British Air and American hotels is the temperature. When mm. I first stayed in an American hotel, I couldn't believe how cool it was. Mm. And not in a Morgan Freeman type way. I mean, this was a double tree. I just mean it was air conditioned. But in Britain, you don't usually have that problem and or luxury. Because My God, I remember last summer. It was, I mean, this summer. So, you know, it got like, it was like 38. It was, I think it was 40 degrees for a week. 40 degrees uh, centigrade, which I think is like 105, 105, 106 Fahrenheit. And no, what nobody has air conditioning here. You just, because we're, we're quite a cold, cool cold country it was awful it was absolutely unbearable america like i think we do need uh i, I do need to get myself an air conditioning unit maybe like a standalone one that i don't have to like build into the wall because a significant amount of british hotel rooms are either not air conditioned or not air conditioned well this is a particular problem when you're squished in one with your future in-laws <laughs> As with many areas of life, hotels are their own subgenre of British versus American word differences. Take, for instance, the name that we assign to that helpful hotel staff member who helps you with your luggage when you're checking in or out. In Britain and much of the rest of the world, this person is known as a hotel porter. Mm -hmm. This is the word we use for what Americans might call a bellboy or a bellhop. Also, whether it's situated on the ground or the first floor, Brits and Americans also can't agree what you call that area of the hotel that you enter upon entering. In Britain, we usually opt for the word foyer. Please note that Americans, just like patrons on my most recent secret stream, are divided on whether this should be pronounced foyer or foyer. Either way, Americans will often call this area the lobby. The More lobby. often than not, Brits will call an elevator a lift. Americans will call a lift an elevator, while elevator. Americans have about a hundred words for a sofa bed. Chief among these are hide a bed, hide bed a couch, bed. sleep a sofa, or pull out sofa. And finally, valet parking. This is something I've encountered far more in the United States than I have in Britain. This is a parking service offered at hotels in which you pay a valet to park your car for you. But the use of- But with valet, like, has, have you ever had your car stolen? <laughs> you know, like, if, you, if you've got a really nice car and the valet just decides, you know what, I can get another job quite easily. Let me just steal this guy's car. Like, does that ever happen? I'd be kind of worried about that. Valet might be confusing to some Brits, who might think of a valet, often pronounced valet, as a male servant, a fine example of which is the character of Jeeves from P.G. Woodhouse's Jeeves and Worcester novels that I somehow keep mentioning in my videos just by coincidence. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below. Another Rawlson awesome video from uh, Lawrence of Lost in the Pond. As suspected, you know, American hotel rooms typically way bigger. The air conditioning one is one that I should have remembered as well. I think it's just becoming really important. Like here in the UK, it's clear as day, the country's getting hotter. Like for, at least from my point of view, you know, like last, this summer was just awful. I'm t like, I was struggling to, to make videos because I would start sweating and I wouldn't cool down, but then I'd turn on the fan and the fan would be making a lot of noise because, I, you know, so, I, and it would be like, you could pick it up on camera. I just think, yeah, air conditioning is definitely going to uh, become more of a common thing here in the UK. What else? The, uh, the, the valet thing is, uh, 
at least from my experience, not a common thing here in the UK, like uh, in terms of hotels. I'm sure some hotels definitely offer it, but typically you, you park your own car here in the UK, but another really, really great video. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.